Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, what we are debating here on the surface, Mr. Speaker, may seem to be a debate about the member from Mikusov. It may seem, Mr. Speaker, to the regular observer to be a debate about the member from Mikusov. It may even seem to some opportunists that's a debate about democracy. It may even seem, Mr. Speaker, that it's a debate about freedom. It may even seem, Mr. Speaker, it's a debate about a personal grudge of members of this honorable house. On the surface, Mr. Speaker, that's what it may look like. First of all, Mr. Speaker, I want to compliment the member for cash resolve for raising the motion. Because, Mr. Speaker, we in this honorable house, all of us have a conscience, all of us have our lives, and all of us have a purpose for existing in this world, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, we, what is happening in this house, Mr. Speaker, is a deep philosophical and ideological event that will mirror itself long in the history of this country, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Sir John Compton, I had the privilege of sitting in the Feminist Honorable House in opposition. I also followed him when I was out of this house, Mr. Speaker. And I heard Sir John Compton say to the Speaker, I withdraw. I heard him say that several times. I heard George Mallet say to the Speaker several times, I withdraw. I heard Alan Buske in his own style say to the Speaker several times, I withdraw. I heard Kenny Anthony, who is in this house for the longest, he and I, and the member for Beaufort North, we've said several times, I withdraw. Castries North. Several times, I withdraw, Mr. Speaker. The member for Castries Central, in the last sitting, he made a public apology and he said to this honorable house, if I may have behaved in a fashion that I should not have behaved, I withdraw. You know why, Mr. Speaker? Because we do not believe that we are greater mortals than the other people in this honorable house or the people in Lucia. We do not believe, Mr. Speaker, that we have a divine right to be in a particular position in this country. We do not believe that because of who we think we are, that we must dictate what happens in this country, Mr. Speaker. We respect democracy, and we respect the rule of law, and we respect the standing orders of this honorable house, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, What's happening here today is significant. And I want the young people in this country to listen carefully, Mr. Speaker. Do not take it as a political charade with people on the streets. What's happening here, Mr. Speaker, is because there is a fundamental dissatisfaction with the will of the people of this country. The people of this country went to the polls and they voted the St. Lucia Labour Party into government 15 seats to two. That is the will of the people. That is democracy. That is the will of the people, Mr. Speaker. But what do you hear of the complaints? Oh, it's only me here. It's only me here. Only me here. Mr. Speaker, it's only you here 
the only reason why the Miku, the member for Miku Sof is here, because the people of St. Lucia wanted him to be here. It is not the first time that there is one member here. Honorable Louis George was there, Mr. Speaker. I heard him say I withdraw. He said I withdraw, Mr. Speaker. But no, the member for Miku Sof, it's only me here. It's only me here, Mr. Speaker. If you did not do your job, if you do not make a mess of this country, if you do not take John Compton's party and make it a point where he lost his own seat, you would not be here alone. You are here because of your own fault. And you are here because the people of St. Lucia put you there, Mr. Speaker. So what you have to do is sit down there and wheel and come back again. But no, no, you will not do that. He will not do that, Mr. Speaker, because he believes and the people who are following him, Mr. Speaker, his surrogates, for their own personal reasons. People who, who hate themselves, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, there's a phenomenon called self-hate, where you hate yourself because of who you are. You do not have the confidence in yourself or the confidence in your colleagues to believe that they can be prime minister or they can be minister or they can take a position in this country, but you hate yourself. So in hating yourself, Mr. Speaker, you hate your fellow man. It's a deep philosophical problem, Mr. Speaker. It's very deep. It's something that hurts me every day when I listen to certain people. When I listen, when I read what they write, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, I carry no animosity. In fact, I was saying to somebody last week, I actually feel sorry for them. I really feel sorry because if you can support a man who comes in his honorable house, who is asked to withdraw a statement, and he doesn't withdraw it, and he says it's about democracy, and you support that, Mr. Speaker, I really feel sorry for you, Mr. Speaker. I feel sorry for you. Because it's a pattern of behavior, the member from Microsoft. It's a pattern of behavior, Mr. Speaker. The member from Microsoft sat here when he was here and said to the speaker, do what you want, I'm not doing it. And you make an excuse for that? Do what you want, I'm not withdrawing. And you find an excuse for that and talk about democracy? The member from Microsoft sat in this honorable house and said to the then lady speaker, I'm not doing it. I'm not. The member from Miku South left the lady speaker without a deputy speaker. The poor lady had to leave her in a stretcher. She sat there for hours, Mr. Speaker, because the member from Miku South did not have the the understanding, the decency or the compassion and the fortitude to say to one of his members, you must be deputy speaker. I said so to one of my members. He may not have been pleased, but I said so to him because I believe in the discipline and the principle and following the constitution of seduction, Mr. Speaker. And I must thank him for agreeing. I must thank him for agreeing, Mr. Speaker, because when you join the St. Lucia Labour Party, you join a party of principle, a party of ideology, a party that stands for something. And that is why they can't understand that the mess they left this country in, we could experience 18% economic growth in less than two years. So that is what that's all about. That is what that charade is all about. It's a distraction. It's a distraction. It's to take you away from where the country is going. It's a distraction. Because remember they said, we could never run this country. We could never run it. We wouldn't be able to pay civil servants. We wouldn't do this, we wouldn't do that. Tourists won't come. The country is a mess, Mr. Speaker. And they have seen, they have seen that we are running this country, the men and women, with the help of the civil service, we are running this country in a way that they have never run it before and will never run it again, Mr. Speaker. And that's the difference. So, Mr. Speaker, this motion is deeper than it seems. 
this motion is not about the cost of landing Bannon. Not about the cost of land by Mr. Speaker. Who valued the land? Who valued the SH lands? If we're talking about selling land, valuing land, Mr. Speaker, who valued the DSH lands? Where was the valuation for the DSH lands? Where's the valuation? Where is the valuation for the lands at Kappa State? Where is the valuation for the lands at Shock? Where's the valuation? Where's the valuation for the lands at Forest here? Yeah. If you're talking about valuation, if it's such a grievous harm that you talk about valuation, where is the valuation for these lands, Mr. Speaker? Who valued the agricultural situation in Viewfort at Bon Sejour? Who valued it? Where's the valuation for it? Where is the valuation? If you talk about valuing lands, so your democracy is threatened because of value of land, Mr. Speaker? But Mr. Speaker, again, it is deeper than that. Remember, Mr. Speaker, when there was a call for demonstration by the Labour, Labour Party, we were advised to go and demonstrate in Marshall. Yeah. You remember? We were, we were advised. Oh, you only want to go and demonstrate in Marshall, Mr. Speaker. And they want to win seat in Marsha. You said to people, go and demonstrate in Marsha. And when there was jazz, you said the people of St. Lucia should not go to jazz in Marsha because Marsha wasn't safe. But I lived the day to see when there was the opening of jazz in Marsha and there was not one incident. And now they want to return, Mr. Speaker. So yesterday they in a rum shop somewhere in, in Marsha, four or five people getting them banned, tell them to come and demonstrate. That's what happened yesterday in Marsha, Mr. Speaker. What happened yesterday? The same people that you told, the same people that you told, go and demonstrate in Marsha. You want to tell them, you want to tell them come here? Mr. Speaker, this motion is deeper than what we are reading today. It's deeper, Mr. Speaker, because there is a feeling in this country that the, the people made a mistake by a few people. They cannot believe, they cannot believe that this big, bad member who was representing Cassius of East is now outside. Can I believe it? It was impossible. They sat there and they laughed. Ha, ha, ha. They sat there and they made fools out of us, tried to make fools out of us, Mr. Speaker. They could not believe that the member for Castries of East, the one that was there the last time, that he's out. They can't believe it. They can't believe, Mr. Speaker. And the one from Gozile, who wants to call people's names, they could not believe that he would be out and he would be beaten by the honorable member for Grozidi now, Mr. Speaker. So it's deeper than that. It's deeper, Mr. Speaker. They could not believe that the member for the late Sir John Compton's constituency, Miku North, when I started politics, Mr. Speaker, you couldn't even pass in Miku North, you know. You could not pass there. When I was in politics, little boy of Julian Hunt, when he was talking about Miku North, his head straight, you know. <laughs> head straight. You couldn't pass in Miku North. You lose your deposit. I remember, Mr. Speaker, there was a funny you know, Mr. Speaker, when I read my book, <laughs> there was a fellow called Civilus Jeffrey. Civilus Jeffrey was a very interesting character. Civil Jeffrey used to be chosen to run Mikunov the day of the election. The day of nomination day. So one day, Julian Hunt calls him and says, Silas, you forget to go and nominate. <laughs> you forget to go and, 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 and nominate. That's how he used to do Mikunov, you know. Silas used to forget. And when he comes to pick up the two hundred fifty dollars he can't get the same people to go and vote for him, you know. There's a fellow called Flood, I think. Yeah, I think so. Huh? Yeah. This, uh, this, this, we barely get seven people 
to, to nominate Sivlas. <laughs> to nominate Sivlas, you have to run Miku North. And only the member for Miku South, we lost Miku North. So I agree with him. I understand him. I understand his pain. I understand why he has to be bitter. I understand why he has to create diversions. I understand why he has to do all kinds of scenes, Mr. Speaker. But we want him to come and sit down here. And that is why we are table in this motion for him to come and sit down here don't go on news spin where you have a host that uh, sorry <clears throat> do not go on the radio mr speaker where you have somebody who will pander to you don't go to the press where you can tell them what they want and they will not challenge you come and sit down here come and stay here and debate the budget Come and stay and debate the policies of this government. Come and stay and debate what you did in St. Jude. Come and stay and debate the Illinois International Airport. Come and sit here and say the people of this country while you brought the economy to its knees. <coughs> Come here. Don't go outside and do it. Come inside there. Come here, Mr. Speaker. And that is why we are tabling this motion to bring the member of Microsoft to account for his misdeeds in the parliament of Seleucia. Not go on Facebook and hide behind all sorts of pseudonyms that we got. Nobody knows who's on Facebook. They don't have the guts. They don't have the strength, Mr. Speaker, to raise their hands and say, that's what I'm saying. So they hide behind Facebook all kinds of accusations. And the member from Microsoft knows all about it, Mr. Speaker. He knows all about it. But he comes here and pretends to fight for democracy. Democracy, Mr. Speaker. This morning, I was told that the police said to the member from Microsoft that people could, should not be in the grounds of the parliament. I was told. That's what I was told, Mr. Speaker. I am Minister for National Security. I could have ask what's happening out there, but I won't, because I want them to demonstrate. I want them to come out there. When it was in our turn, we could not come out there. We were not allowed to be out there, Mr. Speaker, in our turn. We could not be out there, but they were right on the, on the bounds, on fringes, they were there. You know what? Because we really and truly believe in democracy. So come there, let's bring them out there, Mr. Speaker, out there. But you, come inside there. Now listen to the disrespect, Mr. Speaker. You t and I saw old ladies, Mr. Speaker, who can barely walk. Who can barely walk? I feel sorry for them. Following, following, following them. Been back here, eh? been back here. Eh? Barely walk. <clears throat> but you know what they want, Mr. Speaker? They were demonstrating for him to be here. We brought him here, and he left here, and he went somewhere else. That is a disrespect and the scorn and the disregard that the member from Microsoft has for the people of St. Lucia. You demonstrating to be here, when we bring you here, you walk out and leave the people outside. We not, not even if water. <laughs> but if they had drink water and mind their business, they wouldn't be there. <laughs> they allow themselves they allow themselves, Mr. Speaker, to let the whims and fancies and the envy and the jealousy and the hatred of one man to bring them out there, Mr. Speaker. So what's happening now, Mr. Speaker, is more than a motion to bring back the member from Microsoft. It's more than a motion, Mr. Speaker. And if you look at the trend, if you look at how it's working out, Mr. Speaker, so the member from Microsoft talks for cash yourself talks, Right away on Facebook, personal attack. So when I'm finished there, personal attack. That's, that's the trend. That's the trend. Personal attack is to, is to make us feel we are inferior beings. Then I greet us, Mr. Speaker. Then I greet us, Mr. Speaker. The member for Castries Office. He lost his son, Mr. Speaker. He lost his son. And one would expect that people would have said, okay, that is a way. Leave this other point, this is out. Mr. Speaker, the member from Mikosov stayed, stayed on a platform and he listened to a defeated candidate say to the member for Southeast Castries, 
your mourning is over, I'm coming after you now. And he said nothing, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, you want to see that, that hatred? A man lost his son. Another member, another member of your party, Mr. Speaker, is on a platform saying that I'm coming after you now because I gave you enough time to grieve. How can you say how much time a man needs to grieve for the loss of his son? Or his parents, Mr. Speaker. I lost my parents in six weeks. I'm still grieving. Now, how much time? You lost yours, Mr. Speaker. I'm sure you still grieving, Mr. Speaker. He will lose his too. How can you say? Because of politics, because of the hatred and the contempt and the scorn that you have for people, you say that I'm giving you enough time to grieve and I'm coming for you. And the member from Yugoslav sits there and applauds. So, Mr. Speaker, this motion is deeper than that. It's deeper, Mr. Speaker. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, never in the politics of St. Lucia have we ever attacked each other's children. Never. Never, Mr. Speaker. <coughs> no member in this parliament, in, my, in the Labour Party, has ever attacked people's children. Never. But for the member from Yugoslav, nothing is overboard. Nothing is beyond the boundary. Because you know why? Because of hatred, because of contempt, because of scorn for the people of St. Lucia because they elected him out. That's what that means, because that's what's happening. So this is what this motion is all about. This motion is not about the member getting vexed with you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, and I want to compliment you. Even though you have, you, you never time sit down the other day, I get vexed with you. <laughs> Oh, you told me so long. Uh, CDP allocation. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, you see, Mr. Speaker, because I believe that if it's one thing about you, you read your standing orders and you, and you, you run this honorable house how it ought to be run, Mr. Speaker. And I want to compliment you for that. Mr. Speaker, you preserve, you preserve the rights of the minority. I've heard you tell the man for Castro Central several times, don't go there. And he stops. Several times, Mr. Speaker. No one can say you bias. One day, Mr. Speaker, the member for Ansel Canaries was late and you lock him out. <laughs> Yes, because he came in after the governor general, you locked him out. <laughs> Told him he couldn't enter, so he had to sit downstairs. He didn't get vexed. He, he, he didn't quarrel, Mr. Speaker. He did not get vexed. Mr. Speaker, I have seen his honorable house, and I saw, I wasn't here, I was not in this room, St. Clair Daniel, God bless his soul, Mr. Speaker, the leader of the opposition, Julian R. Hunt at the time, had... There was a vote for the budget, and the nose had it. Yeah. So that means the budget could not have passed. The speaker, at that point, he said, let us get a, re a recess. <laughs> because, <laughs> because the budget, <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, you know, when there are people out there playing, they, they are historians and you know history. I know it too, you know, I know it too. But history is only seen, only seen in certain people's eyes. The speaker said, to the, mem the leader of the opposition, I make the rules in this house and I say I didn't hear the nose. <laughs> and everybody came back, sit down, and the budget passed. And he put a question again and the budget passed. That's what happened there, Mr. Speaker. Nobody disrespected him. Julian Hans sat there and took it. Nobody disrespected him. I sat here. A lady was there, speaker, and <clears throat> I was across there, and all the rest of my colleagues walked out. And I said, I said, I said to her, Madam Speaker, why are you doing that? She disregarded me. I stood up, and I made my case, and I walked out her. I didn't disrespect her. I didn't go to the press and condemn her. I didn't do that, Mr. Speaker, because in this honorable house, it's a privilege to be here, Mr. Speaker. And that is why there are some people who will never be here. So they come and they sit here with, 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 with a jacket and no hair. <coughs> so,
Ocho. So, Mr. Speaker, this motion, Mr. Speaker, is not only about an apology, Mr. Speaker. If the member from Miku South, if he had any respect, if he had any respect for his colleagues, if he had any respect for the standing orders that Sir John Compton sat on in Parliament for over 45 years, if he had any respect for the history, for the contribution that Sir John Compton made to the Parliament of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker, he would not take the challenge of standing orders. You will tell me, Mr. Speaker, it would be very simple, so simple, for the member of Microsoft to say, Mr. Speaker, I made a mistake, I apologize. Three words, I apologize. Very simple. Very simple, Mr. Speaker, but no, no, not him. Who are we? Who are we to tell him, this big fella, to apologize, Mr. Speaker? So, no, he talk about democracy. Mr. Speaker, the member of Microsoft talking about democracy? Mr. Speaker, I tell you something. I have not yet revealed what I found in government, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, you know, there were people being paid by the government, not the police, to record talk shows. To record talk shows. And record the talk shows, record what was said, not the police, eh? Not, 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 not police. And these reports were sent to the member from Yugoslavia every morning? Mr. Speaker, <laughs> you know, and the only reason why we have all these diversions now, and all these, because you know, we are coming close to the thing. The reports are coming out. Yeah. The reports are going to be tabled. You know, we're getting close, so people are getting jittery. We're beginning to know about the accounts in Panama. <clears throat> so everybody is jittery. Everybody's jittery. So that's why we have these motions. Because everybody's jittery, Mr. Speaker. Everybody's jittery. Because what they sought, they sought that we would have behaved like a bunch of of reckless, reckless, hot around the heels, and just go ahead and make accusations and do this and do that. But no, <clears throat> everything we said, we wanted to. Prove it, Mr. Speaker. So right now, right now, Mr. Speaker, right now, I made a simple statement. I said that the Roso Dam had not been completed. Very simple. Four words. I said nothing else. Nothing else, Mr. Speaker. Long story. Long story, Mr. Speaker. But that's not going to put me off, Mr. Speaker. The same way this motion is not going to put me off. It's not going to put me off, Mr. Speaker, because I have a purpose. I have a purpose. I'm saying the cost, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, this motion is about creating a distraction from the way the country is running. This motion is about trying to ensure that the youth economy does not function. This motion is trying to ensure that the work we are doing to combat crime doesn't work. This motion, Mr. Speaker, is about creating division and diversion in the country so this government can lose its way and cannot keep focus on the work that has to be done, Mr. Speaker. But, Mr. Speaker, we are not going to be derailed, Mr. Speaker. We are not going to lose focus. Every man and woman in this parliament, Mr. Speaker, has a focus. We have a job to do. We have a job to do, Mr. Speaker, because the people of St. Lucia believed in us. We have a responsibility, Mr. Speaker, and we have to protect them, Mr. Speaker. <coughs> Mr. Speaker, this motion, Mr. Speaker, when you have complaints about people saying, protect the victory, Mr. Speaker, is the victory at what is there? Is the victory that borders in Parliament. So if we don't protect the victory, how can we come back in Parliament? But you know, Mr. Speaker, they don't want that. They don't want us to protect the victory. They want us to go all helter-skelter. 
all over the place, Mr. Speaker, so that we can lose our focus and we cannot do the business of the state, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, every young person knows in sports there's an umpire or referee. When you get red carded, you have to leave the pitch. When you get red carded, you have to leave the pitch. You can't even go back and sit down among your colleagues in the doghouse. You have to leave the pitch. You have to go because you get red carded. Lock a room for you. Lock up. But no, Mr. Speaker, in sports, Mr. Speaker, have you ever heard anybody get up and tell the referee, I'm not doing that? Have you ever heard anybody, after the second empire puts you out, tell the empire, I'm not going out? But that is the example that the mayor from Microsoft is giving to the young people of St. Lucia. That's the example, Mr. Speaker. He and his surrogates, that is the example they are giving to the young people of St. Lucia. That's the example, Mr. Speaker. Have you ever heard, Mr. Have you ever heard, Mr. Speaker? Have you ever heard in, in any sport, you run 100, 100 meters and the, the, the judge tells you that you're out because you kick off before, then you, you disqualified. You ever see you come and say, I'm not leaving the track, you stand up there? <laughs> never, never happen. And you want to say you're an example to young people? And talk about democracy, Mr. Speaker? And you expect people to listen to the police when they tell them to stop. If you, if you can come in the highest making decision body in the country and behave in this dishonorable way, Mr. Speaker, and talk about democracy. So when you refer to you tell about democracy. <clears throat> Mr. Speaker, and that is what this motion is about. So this motion, Mr. Speaker, has a lot more than is written on this paper, Mr. Speaker. A lot more. A lot more. <clears throat> and I want the young people of St. Lucia to understand what this is all about. This is not about, about what it seems to be. Not about it, Mr. Speaker. It's a deep philosophical, it's a deep philosophical hatred. A philosophical belief that we are not supposed to be here. It's a belief that only one type of person should be here, Mr. Speaker. And they look for all kinds of excuses. If you say you come from somewhere, they tell you all kinds of things, Mr. Speaker. You must not say where you're from. You must be afraid to say where you're from. You must be afraid to speak about your history. You must be afraid to say where you're born. You must be afraid. If you say it, they say you are racist, Mr. Speaker. You can't say anything. Anything you say, you are racist. But they are the ones who begin the racism. They are the ones who said that the class let them down. They are the ones, Mr. Speaker, but this, they started. I have never heard the poison St. Lucia. I have never heard the poison done for the man from Yugoslav when he said about Dr. Kenny Anthony that he's a master. I've never heard the same part, but nobody, everybody's afraid of that. Nobody says that. No one says that. We talk about democracy and you, Mr. Speaker, behaving in a fashion. The mayor from Microsoft has said openly to the speaker, I'm not doing that. But they pretend to forget it. They pretend to forget it, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to tell you that your work you're not God, you're not perfect. All of us, all of us, and let's not pretend some of us have different pasts. All of us have past, all of us have present. All of us. He used to that sin cast the first stone, as Sir John said. So let's not pretend that we're so good and we're so holy and endowed and look at that and he did that and he did this and look at me <laughs> I'm crying <clears throat> let's not, 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 not pretend Mr. Speaker that, that, that we burden anybody else and these guys and they did me so many things only me here and it's not about me it's not about you and you collecting money <clears throat> it's not about you you could do better I can do better, not me of other people. Well, put it in your pocket and fight your own case. It's not about you, but some people calling for the state to pay your bills. Mr. 
miss a bit. You miss a bit. You miss a bit. Mr. Speaker, we have business to do. Mr. Speaker, I support the motion. The member from, for Castries South, he laid down the case. The member for Viewfort North and other members who spoke, Mr. Speaker, they laid the grounds why we all should support this motion. I want to encourage my colleagues to support the motion, but I also want to encourage them to not get derailed. Keep your eye on the price. Don't get derailed. Because the objective is to derail you. The objective is to try to divide you. Because nobody said, they said in the beginning that we would have been divided. That no one would accept me. That the member for Kashisha would fight with me. That's what they said. You heard so. They said Kenny Anthony would come back. Kenny waiting. Kenny just waiting. That's what they said. So, that's what this motion is about. This motion <coughs> is about saying that Stevenson King would come in, the, come in this government and do his thing and King can stay them fellas. That's what this motion is about. That's what it's about, Mr. Speaker. This motion is not about democracy. It's about trying to derail us. It's about trying to put us off course, Mr. Speaker. It's about trying to hide the 18% economic growth in this country. It's about trying to say that St. Lucia doesn't have the lowest unemployment from the year 2010. The lowest unemployment, both in youth unemployment and otherwise, Mr. Speaker. That's what this motion is about, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I support the motion. I thank the member for Cash Yourself for having the courage to come to this parliament and deal with it. And I thank all the members who either in their words or in their actions have supported this motion, Mr. Speaker. Because we do not want, we want the member from Microsoft to come inside here and answer and behave like a man and debate and talk and, re and stand up on points of order and deal with the business of the people of the parliament, not run outside like a little child. They take my toys, daddy, they take my toys, daddy, my toys. That's what's happening. That's what's happening. Daddy, they take my toy. <laughs> Come and sit and like a man and talk and debate and face your colleagues man to man. Be a man. Don't believe that because you're privileged, you can do whatever you want. Be a man. And those who support him, tell him to be a man. And don't come and just stand the people, attack people's children. Stand up people's children, Mr. Speaker. Nobody attacks. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.